You're not looking so good. <laughs> How's it going, Deke? Manny. Need fuel? Bike's probably thirsty. Good choice, man. Good choice. I'll wrap that up for you. Oh yeah, that's a good piece. Cool. Need anything else? This should last you for a while. Good choice, man. Good choice. I'll be here. I want to. No, no. I'll keep an eye out for hey, more shit. Just look. See around, man. Do they feel pain? Anything? No. My minds are gone. I remember reading about the virus. That's all I got. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Hey, hey! Nice. That's it. Got it. See you, man. Hey, well, talk to you later. What's going on? That'll last you. Come by any time. Thanks. You, uh, need something, man? What's up, Manny? All right. All right, check back later, man. See ya. Wait a sec. I'll open it. How's it going, booze man? Supplies. Could use some more meat if you get a chance. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, I guess it's been a while since we did any hunting. I'll see if I can scare up some meat while I'm out. Uh, remember what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I had Cope give me a few pointers, believe it or not. Oh shit, I don't believe it. Thanks, Dean. See you, booth man. Alright, now I just gotta find some meat. Uh deer. 
bear, wolf. This is Radio Free Oregon. The truth shall set you free. Another goddamn razor this morning. In our supposed global utopia, instead of getting the best products from around the world, we got the shittiest products cheap foreign labor could churn out. Everything in the last 50 years was built to break so that you could buy once, buy again, buy, buy, buy. You always had to get the new car, the new phone, the new this and that. All to feed the beast of crass commercialism. You want something built to last? You couldn't go overseas, no. Nope. You need real, hard-working Americans at the helm. When we build something, it'll stand the test of time. And the same hands that built this country, they'll withstand anything this new world throws at us. Our roads bend, friends, but they do not break. And neither will we. This is Mark Copeland for Radio Free Oregon. Don't believe the lies. They look pretty broken to me, Cope. But hey, whatever you say. Eh, nothing wrong with a little crass commercialism. I mean, I could use a new bike right about now.
set traps for him and you and your old man used to look another Nero Mike <laughs>
sense, I could not discern what was attracting the insects, but from the size of the swarm, recent carrying is indicated. Should be just over here. Damn it, where's it? as to Tobinus Atratus is confirmed. Lots of rumors with this here, but I have to suit on. Let me tell you, the carrion is still mostly intact and appears what? to be what a Corleus Minus or Mule Deer. I guess if anybody could check that. Striation of the larger muscle masses indicate infection for the strain HB. We'll take sample two. Well, look at it this way, you poor son of a bitch. At least you weren't torn apart by freaks. If you lived a few more weeks, you might have become one yourself. I wonder that been something. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. uh -uh. What do you want? Stay back. I just want to talk. Uh, Nero Protocol 2-7 states clearly that, that if conducting operations in quarantine zones, that if I encounter any civilians or sub... sub civilians! That I'm forbidden from making contact. Really? See, that sounded to me like making contact. Yes. Yes, it did. You're alive. Yes. I am. How? How are you alive? What? Right? I, I, I don't understand. Okay. You were there that night. Farewell. The next night, refugee Nero camp. Protocol 2 7 were burning. states. I, Everyone was dead. Two they were slaughtered. Seven. Torn limb Nero for goddamn limb. Protocol All right, two listen up. We're going to do this the easy way or the hard way. The easy way, we have a little chat. You give me the information that I need, and then you go back to digging your way through freaker shit or whatever the hell else you're doing out here. The hard way. I crack open that little spacesuit, and then we see what your friends out there have to say about you breathing in all this contaminated air. So, what's it going to be, O'Brien? <laughs> Yes? Okay? Okay? You remember the rooftop of the old brewery? I put a woman on your chopper, she was wounded. Yes. I remember, a, a knife wound. She, she was cut pretty bad. I went to the refugee camp that you said you were taking her to. Everyone was dead, so I'm gonna ask you again. How did you survive? We weren't there. We were diverted south to another camp. Like you said, the camp in Belknap was overrun, so they moved us south to a camp outside of Silver Lake. Were there survivors? You mean now? I don't know. I, I was transferred to the research unit. Did she survive? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I can find out. I, I can check. You have one of our radios. That's how you... Uh, I, I can't promise anything, but... I'll check. Uh huh. And I'm gonna go with you. No, you, you can't. Please, you don't. Hey, don't understand. But fucking shoot you. Not before I shoot you. Okay, look. If you're gonna fucking kill me, do it. Okay? I did my job. Did that woman, your wife? I put her on oxygen. I gave her an IV. I kept her alive. I got in a lot of trouble for that. She was septic. She wasn't gonna make it. But I got out of the mass unit. I saved her goddamn life. O'Brien, <sighs> report. I have to go. Please, I, you have to get out of here. You don't know these men. You don't know Ryan, what they're capable of. If I don't hear from you, I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to track you down. And I'm going to do a lot worse than snap off an antenna. I'm sorry about your wife. But you're not the only one who lost someone that night. 